Bruchem Aboyim, to the eighth of the continuing series of Shi'urim on the oral tradition of the written law. Um, to summarize what we've done up to now, um, the first five Shi'urim, the first five lectures, um, we discussed precisely the concept of the oral tradition of the written law, how the written law, in fact, reflects the methodology and the way in which Chazal, um, as the Chazanish put it, um, had a Messiah and a tradition to interpret the Psukim, interpret the verses. And in fact, actually, the very structure of the Chumash reflects a structure of orality, which is part of the what we call the Teresh Shabialpeh. And then we devoted two Shi'urim in applying the methodology and the insights that we, um, that we developed in the first five Shi'urim to the Kolben Pesach. Um, needless to say, we could spend an entire series, of sh- a series on the Kolben Pesach, but actually the purpose is just sort of like to give um, specific examples, and, um, and of course the reader can, the rest is of course left to the reader. Um, beginning now, I would like to focus on a, um, another, as I would call, sugya in the Chumash, which is that of Yom Kippur. And, um, of course, the, um, the Yont of Yom Kippur appears several times in the Chumash. The, it appears in, in Achai Mais, where the Torah describes what's called the service, the Avoida of the Kohen Gadol. And then it appears afterwards in Pasha's Emor, and in, in Pasha's Pinchas, and by Midbar we'll have more to say about the different places where, the, um, where it appears. In any case, um, Achai Mais... Um, which is in Vayikra Tezayin, um, in Pasuk Aleph, very, very beginning. And we have a, um, there the, the Torah and Achim Mois from, um, from Perek Tez, from, in Perek Tezayin, from Pasuk Aleph, until including Pasuk Lamedalet, the Torah describes in detail the Avada of the Koyin on Yom Kippur. And then in the final psukim, the Torah tells us that this Avaidah will be done once a year um, on the 10th day of Tishrei. Um, and we'll speak a little bit about that too. Now, <clears throat> the, Torah ends, the Torah begins by saying, Vaidaber Hashem al Moshe, Achrei Moshe Nei Bnei Arim, on Pasuk Aleph, Bekov Asom of Nei Hashem Vayamusu. And um, um, immediately, I mean, the, the Mephoshim raised the question that what is, in other words, that in fact the Misa of B'nai Arain um, did not play, take place, um, does not appear in the Chumash, in the Pasha of Matsaira immediately before this, but actually the Misa of B'nai Arain is, um, appears in the Chumash in Pasha Shmini. So the, um, the, 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 the expression, Achrei Meshne B'nai Arain, um, appears to be at least six parakim removed, who really actually the Torah gives us the account of the death of the two sons of Aaron. <coughs> so the Ramban, right, the Mephoshim speak about this, but the Ramban, <laughs> right, mentions, what is Achrei Moshenei Bnei Aaron? says the Ramban, Ki miyad kashem meisu bonav viziyaz Aaron min ayayinu min ashecha, shlo yamus, right, immediately after the Misa of Bnei Aaron, so there, so there, um, Aaron is, um, is given the warning, the prohibition of, um, of Shiso Yayin, right? And also at that point too, Aaron is, is, um, is given the, is, is um, administered the prohibition of not coming, right? Not coming in front of a Kodesh Baruch the Kilva, right? Okay, and says the Ramban, says the Ramban, not only Shisayayi, which appears in the Chumash immediately after the Misa Bnei Aray, but even this parasha, says the Ramban, right, was probably the, the next day after the two sons of Aray. Because at that day he was an Oynen, in other words, the de- what he's saying is, why is the next day? Because the very same day he's an Oynen, and therefore... Right, Ruach um, HaKadosh is not Shem Mitoch HaAtzvus, and therefore Kodesh Bohol commanded them the day after the Misa, right? Because uh, I need this to tell you only last one day. And it says the Ramban, V'aldaiti kol ha-teya keseida, she-kol ha-mekoyme she-bohem ye-ucha ha-muktem ye-farish boke goin v'yedabesh ha-moshe v'asinai, etc. Amabakad achrei mois, so I think he's a ha-ya achrei mois miyad. The Ramban is, Iran has a very, very 
important shita that really the Torah goes kaseda. Even though Chazal did say a mucha book to but um, the Ramban, let's put it this way: many times, um, I won't say rejects the principle chas v'shalom, but many times the Ramban, at least in Kipshutzo Shal Mikra, um, tries to learn the Chumash without that principle. Um, those of you interested in this, you should look in this past week's Pasha, Pasha's boy, um, Perak Yudbeis, Pasuk Mem. There the Ramban actually, in fact, takes issue with, um, with the Bilchilta and Pirtel de Yeza in how to understand the 430 years that the Torah speaks about that, that B'nai Yisrael was a Mitzrayim. But in any case, Ramban says that the Torah always goes Kaseder. And for this reason, says Ramban brings a riot to this because it says, Achrei Moishrei B'nai Arei. Why say Achrei B'nai Arei? Torah wants to indicate to you that this Pasuk is actually not in the status of Pirtel de Chumash, but the Pasha was actually commanded right after the Misa B'nai Arei. So the Ramban actually uses this. However, what's interesting is, is that this Pasha is extremely interesting and raises many, many questions. And what I'm going to begin with, right, is actually a piece that appears at the very end of the Chachmas Adam. All of us know the Chai Adam, the Chachmas Adam of Avam Danzika, who I think of being Maseira, was either a Machutin, or was either the son of a Machutin or the Gro. He certainly had a knew the Gro. And at the very end of the Chachmas Adam, there's a small piece entitled Omer Chazak Hashem Shem Shem Kippur Mechapa Kabisa Sadiq Mechaperes V'lazoiz Kasavdi Kan Shuladaiti La Misa Be'ezus Hashem. I think after Hilchas Avelas, so he speaks about the Misa of Tzadikim that is Mechaper, and here the Chachmas Adam presents us with a very original reading of Achimais, which he attributes to the Gra. And I think that this reading of the Chumash is probably as original as any commentator has suggested, not only um, traditional, but non-traditional commentators. Okay, as we'll see in a little while. Okay, now, <coughs> the Chach Adam says, the Pash is Achim, I'm going to actually read through him, because I think it's important that, that people, like, 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 like in the Halakha too, there's tremendous clarity here, and I think it's important to go through the details to a certain extent. But Pasha's Acha, yes, the Datek Harbe. Says the Chachmas Adam, there are many diktukim one can make in Pasha's Acha Mois. The Mishuna Pasha Zumi called Pasha Shebatayra. But this Pasha of Acha Mois is different than all the Pasha's of the Torah. <coughs> right? Meaning, Pasha's that deal with the Yomim Tayyim, with the Mayadim. She calls it Chilab Eze Yom, Chachem Mashiach Kriva. Says the Chachmas Adam, all the Pasha's of the Torah, first it tells us which day of the year it is. And then the Torah details the Kabbalahs. Kedis of Pashas Emma, Pashas Pinchas, Bidah Lachodesh, Takriv V'chen Kula. However, here, in this parasha, V'kan Kosov T'chila Kol Sedav V'lo V'so Kosov B'Kodesh Hashvi. In other words, here, the Torah tells us of all the Kabbalahs, of all the Avoida, a Yom Kippur, and only at the very, very end, right, only at the very, very end, does the Torah inform us in Pasuk Chav Tes, which means 29 Pesukim afterwards, the Chumash informs us, Why at the very end? This is an anomaly in the Chumash. That's what the Chach Adam is saying. Okay? And it says, Right? It should have, first it should have said, This is what Aaron will do. Came in the Siyam Chippah, Koyme Sheyim Shach, V'meli Adinin Shudav V'kai Gavne. In other words, it says at the end of the parsha, right? At the end of the parsha, once again, and then in pasuk lamed beis, the chipa hakoyin. So what does it have to say every time in the parsha? Aaron, 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 until pasuk chav ches, right? Only Aaron is mentioned. In fact, actually, in this Avoida, is the Avoida of the Koyen Gadol, of any Koyen Gadol, as is indicated in Pasuk Lamed Bey's V'chip HaKoyen. So the Torah should have said V'chip HaKoyen, and that's it. Why mention Aaron Aaron every single time? Aaron, why is Aaron any different than any Koyen? Okay, and that's the question, the yes. And then, right, and then, too, okay, afterwards he brings a Machleikas, which we're going to speak about, the Machleikas, in fact, actually, it appears to be that there are kabbalists that are missing here that appear in Pashas Bamidbar. 
That's a machal kastanayim. <coughs> okay? And then also, too, he says at the very, very end, right, is that, that in fact, um, we have actually, it says, beginning of Chavtes, v'hoises os lachem l'chukas oila b'chodesh ha-shvi, right? And then, v'yem ezechap alechem l'tar eschem, shabos shabos oil, v'chipa koi. And then after that it says, Again, the Torah is repeating itself. Okay? So, I'm not going to go into all the details, because this is what I'm going to go into probably next time. But the, what, the, what the Chochmas Adam is doing is, we have a very, very interesting and anomalous structure to the Pausha. That the Pausha begins with a tzivoy, which appears to be directed and only directed to Aaron. And then at the very end of the Pausha, <coughs> first and beginning in Pach Kosser you know, as we have 28 psokim detailing the avayda of Aaron HaKoyen. And then at the very end of the Pausha, beginning with Pach Kosser and the 29th Pasuk, then the Torah tells us, speaks in general, tells us which day it is, this is an avayda of the Koyen, why is the Pausha structured like this? Okay. So he says he's going to answer this based on Pisha Shamati B'Shem Ereno HaGoyin HaChazim Ereno Rav Eliyahu. He's going to answer this, these questions based upon something that he heard B'Shem the Gaw. Okay, now. <coughs> the Gaw, he says, it begins with the Gaw. The more make, there's a very, there's a, there's a, there's a Pasuk the Torah, once again, the Torah details the Avoida of Aaron HaKoyen through 28 Pesukim. <clears throat> and it appears that everything is being detailed in Seder. There's one Pasuk that Chazal tell us is out of order. What Pasuk is that? That's Pasuk of Gimel. The Pasuk says, Uva Aaron al Elom Moyed. Aaron will come into Ol Moyed. Upashes big the abash el vasha voy el akodesh vidichu sham. It says Aaron will come into all mayed, and then after that he leaves all mayed and he takes off the before begadim the big day lavan. So Rashi quotes a gemara in Yuma. Uva ayin al oyim mayed. Amu Rabbi Seinu she ain zem mekoymet shal mikvazed. This pasuk is out of place. And he says, and Chazal will give a reason that this Pasuk is out of place because based upon this Pasuk, Chazal come up with the Halacha Lameisha Sinai that there were five Tevilas. There were five changes of the Godin, right? And five Kiddushay Yodayim Raglayim and five Tevilas. That's what those of you who've learned Yuma. If you haven't learned Yuma, you'll miss some learn Yuma in the Daf And, um, and but Chazal say this was out of place in order to create the Halacha Lameisha Sinai of the five tevilas and the five chiluf of the <coughs> Okay, so now, the gra, I mean, the gra must have said over what he said on this pasuk. Why is this, why did the Torah write something out of place? How can the Torah can write something in order? <coughs> so the gra brings an amazing thing. The gra brings a medrash, a yikarabba. It's in Pasha Chafalef, and it's in, I guess, Simon Zayin. So the Medr says Bezois, and the Medr says, Omer of Yehuda, Bereb Simen, Tzal, Godoy Hala Moshe, Bedova Zeh. The Moshe Ben had Shemenes Tzal, the Aaron can't come to the El HaKodesh. The Medr says, um, <coughs> the Medr says, commenting on the fact that first the Pasuk says, right, first the Pasuk says, um, to warns Aaron not to come, right, any time that he wants, into the, well, into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, as we'll see in a little while. But then after that, next Pasuk says, but if he comes, if he comes with these things, then he's allowed admission into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So, the Medjah says it was a south to Meshach, Beinu, Aaron, when can Aaron come? He can't come one in 10 years, one in 70 years. So the Medrash answers and says, no, so the Medrash answers and says, right? It's not that you think that Aaron can only come 
you know, once in a decade, once every 70 years, right? Right? Ela b'chol shor shu roitz li kanesh Anytime Aaron wants to come to the Kanesh HaKadosh, he can come in. Rak shi kanesh b'sayda l'zeh. But if he wants to come in, he'll come as kaseh l'chazeh. That's what the Medrash says. Zok Rabbeinu HaGor, says the Gor, incredible. Says the Gor like this. Al kocha nishma mizeh, says the Gor. We're forced to say, based upon this Medrash, and of course all the diukum we've made from the Psokim, the Isser of going to Kosher Kedoshim was said only to Kohanim Gedolim after Aaron. But Aaron had permission to go to the Kosher Kedoshim anytime he wanted. But Aaron had permission to go to the Kosher Kedoshim anytime he wanted. Presumably when there was a Tumor in the base of Mikdash. So as long as he came in, right, following, right, these prescriptions. Okay, so says the, but now the Gore is actually, the Gore is actually coming not to answer the question of the Chai Odom, but his question is, why was the Pasuk put out of place? The answer is, originally the Pasuk wasn't there. Originally, <coughs> the original Avoida of Aaron and only Aaron Akkad was any time there would be a tuma, a pollution in the base Hamikdash in the in the Mishkan, Aaron would come in according to the Seder, minus Pasuk Chav Gimel, that wasn't part of the original Seder. However, afterwards, or let's put it this way, there was a tzivoy to future Kayanim Kayanim Gedayla that in fact actually they could only come on Yom Kippur, and as a result of this tzivoy, this pasuk, of course, api hakavura, halacha l'moshev sinai, was placed here in the middle of the pasha in order to fulfill the halacha l'moshev sinai of five tevilas. There was Aaron Akain in his emergency avoda only required three tevilas, says the Gaur. However, for future generations, which required five tevilas, so therefore, a pasuk was placed out of place. Meaning, if we could say it in the Lushan of the oral tradition of the written law, in fact, there was an original tzivoy to Aaron after the Misa of Nodavavil. And then afterwards, there was a tzivoy to all Kayanim Gedolim after Aaron HaKoyen. And because of this, this original tzivoy was al pi and only al pi redacted. An extra pasuk of gimel was placed in the seda avoda, and then Chazal understood al pi the Torah hamasura biyadenu to learn the halacha lemeshim esinai of the five tevilas and the five kiddush or the ten kiddush yadayim raglayim and the five changes of the garden. The Gra is learning like we're learning in the Chumash. But in fact, we see here a clear redaction of Piagvur in order, <coughs> in order to interpret the Devar Hashem based upon the Torah Shabbat Peh. Apiyah Moseira Shalom de Rabbi Seinu. And that's the way the Gra is learning. Okay, now, <coughs> the fact is, is that this um, this piece, this, this, uh, oh, so, so says the Chach Adam, very, very, very good. Now we've answered our questions. Why is the Pausha structured without saying Bechadish Hashvi? And then, and then right, until Pasuk, through, until including Pasuk Chavches, and only in Pasuk Chavtes it says, So says the Chach Adam, very, very good. The first 28 Pesokim are speaking about the Avoida, of the emergency Avoida of Aaron HaKoyen when he would enter, in, when there would be a, a Tumor in the Mishkan. And after what this was addended, the Tzivoy, that this Avoida would be actually a permanent Avoida, it would take place not any time a Koyen Godel would want to purify the Mishkan, but in later generations, 
the Kayam Gedolim were, 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 um, were allowed only once he had Yom Kippur. And therefore, at the end of the Pasha, now we introduce the notion of Yom Kippur. That's the only day the Kayam Gedolim can enter Kedoshim. That's the Chachmas Adam's understanding, or his tailor, it's based upon the, the idea of the Gloa in understanding the anomalous nature of the Pasha of this Chomish. Interesting. So actually, a lot of our work has been done for us by the, by the Gloa and the Chachmas Adam. But in fact, actually, we have many miles to go before we sleep. Okay, now. It comes out is that the matters are never simple in the Chumash. Why man is never simple in the Chumash? <clears throat> because if Pasha Zachary Mois was the only Pasha, right, which spoke about Yom Kippur and the Tahara of the Mishka, the purification of the Mishka, and so therefore the, the going the Chachmas Adam read very, very nicely. <clears throat> However, there are other parts of the Chumash. The Teira, that's Oli B'mokim Echad and Osh B'mokim Acher, in Shmois, in at the very very end of the Hakamas Hamishkan, also speaks about um, speaks about the Hatara, right? <coughs> that Aaron came into the Kadoshim, or after Meshabeno, and there was a Hatara, a Katoris, right, that filled up the Mishkan. And then at the very end of Pash Titzavah, which is actually the last, at the very end, right, at the end of Pash Titzavah, which is the, at least the, the Kamas HaMishka, it says, and I'm reading now from Pash Titzavah, at the end of Pash Titzavah, Perak Lamed Pasuk Yod, it says, V'chipa Aren al Kanoisav, Achas Bashana. Aren, Rub Machaper, on the Kanois HaMizbeach. Now, which Kanois are we speaking about? We're speaking about the Mizbeach Hazov. Mizbach HaKeteres, upon which Keteres is, is burnt. Achas Bashana. Bidam Achatas HaKippur. Achas Bashana. Yechapa Allah L'Derei Seichem. Kodesh Kodesh Mulashem. So we have a stira to what the Chochav Zadar the Gora is saying. Here, Ari, right, is commanded only once a year is he allowed. Achas Bashana, the Torah emphasizes. Achas Bashana, twice. Achas Bashana, the same possible that Aaron is commanded to mechapel on the Mizbeach Hazov, Mizbeach of Hashem, right? Only once in a year, bidam chatas ha-kippurim. So, in fact, the question we have to raise is, is that <coughs> we see with the term of Aaron, he was allowed once a year. And because of this, right, so the Mephoshim, <coughs> the more modern as well as the more traditional Mephoshim, also raised the issue why, in fact, actually is the Torah stipulating that only one time Aaron. So, of course, you know, one could argue, I believe even the Chachmas even raises this, I have to look inside again, that in fact, actually, it's not necessarily a stira. You could say that, you know, there was a echiyuv, an obligation to mechapa one time a year. But of course, any other time during the year, Aaron could also come in. A little bit dochuk. Because the Torah says, achas bashana, achas bashana. Okay? <coughs> um, the <coughs> less traditional commentators want to claim that, in fact, actually, Matters change along in history, and that, um, in fact, um, this represents different viewpoints, a reform movement, etc., etc. It's al shulch al al shulch I don't feel I need to go into all the details, but nonetheless, it appears that we have a what appears to be a um, a contradiction in the chumash, or perhaps, right, a contradiction in the chumash, which suggests that um, an original um, prescription of purifying the Mishkan, at some point, chas v'shalom, right, might have changed later on in history, chas v'shalom, and, but in any case, the, the question is over here is how do we relate to the <coughs> Pasuk and Pasha Tetzave, right, which prescribes that Aaron should come in only once a year. And this is what I want to um, speak about now. <coughs> the discussion of the 
Avoid of Aaron, which actually, um, which the, um, <coughs> which the, um, the glo- which actually begins actually with the Gron the Chach Adam, um, deals with the issue of Tahara. Right? I mean, why would Aaron have to come in at different times of the year? I mean, the, the Mashmah says, is because um, if there was a Tumah in the Mishkan, so Aaron, in fact, there was a need to be metal of the Mishkan. And this is clearly Mashmah in the Pesukim too. And this is certainly Mashmah in Shemais. In Shemais, um, the Pasuk, in Pasuk Saba, um speaks about um, um, even though it's a Chippa Aaron Akanos Achap Pishon and Midam Achat Asakipurim, but what's Chippa Al Kanoisa? Chippa Al Kanoisa here seems indicate uh, from Tuma. Chippa Al Kanoisa. Lachaper also means to tar, to tur, as well as to atone. It means to is an act of tahara. <coughs> However, the question I think that has to be raised is, is that in the parsha of Achay Mois, you see, if we're speaking about being the tarot, purifying the Mishkan from Tome, it seems that it's enough to do that on the Mizbeach Hazov. That's the closest place a person has to go. And this is also clear from the Psukim. From the Psukim in Achay Mois, right? Um, it speaks about um, when Mechap, right? Um, um, it speaks about Hazor that was actually in front of, well, well actually there's Hazor inside too, but it speaks about the Chippa la Mizbeach, right? That Aaron goes out to the Mizbeach Hashir Fnei Hashem, right? And then he's Mechapa on the Mizbeach, <coughs> also the Mizbeach Hazor, then to the Mizbeach, that's in the Hazor. In other words, as far as Tum and Taira is concerned, right? It seems that Kapala is limited, really, in fact, to the Mizbeach Azov, Mizbeach Azov, and the Mizbeach Hanachoshis, which is in the Azor. However, what's the Kaddish HaKadoshim? What's the Kaddish HaKadoshim? The, the, the Torah begins in Achimais by speaking about Aaron coming to the Kaddish HaKadoshim. That's the, the, the Pazik Bey says. We don't see that there's a hazar on the kapoiris. There's a hazar in front of the kapoiris, but not on the kapoiris. Not to mention that in Bayashen there's a hazar even though there was no kapoiris. Even though there was no kapoiris. And it's mashma too that the, 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 the coming into the kapoiris required, right? Um, Kiva on la kapayas. I don't have to come with, with an anon. Meaning is that it seems to me that the issue of tuma is limited up until the mizbeach hazov, and that's what Shmois is speaking about. Shmois is speaking about the chipa aron al kanais of achas bashana bidam chatas hakipole. We're speaking about being me. Metar the Mizbeach. And this makes sense because in Parashat Tzatzavah we're speaking about the Kamas HaMishkan and it's important that the Mishkan be Tome in order for it to be the base HaVoydas Hashem. Tome. Uh, be Tome. In order for it to be the base HaVoydas Hashem. And therefore it said that Aaron has to make sure once a year to be Metar the Mizbeach Hazov on which, on which the, we have the Keteris we have, the, we have the Keteris which is offered twice a day as part of the HaVoydas HaMishkan. Avodas HaMishkan. But what about coming to the Kodesh HaKadoshim? It seems to me that the Kodesh HaKadoshim is not connected with what's called Tum and Taira, per se, but really, in fact, is connected with Kapala. Kapala, as it says in Achimais, Bichol Chataisechem. Bichol Chataisechem indicates that in addition to an act of Taha, an act of purification, is also an act of, of Tshuva, an act of Kapara for for oven for hate for sin. So what I want to claim is, in fact, actually, is that the pasuk in Pash Tzave is not necessarily a stira to the fact that he comes. In other words, not necessarily a stira. In other words, it could possibly be. We could even go with the glor. In other words, in other words, <coughs> in other words, what I want to say is, is that <coughs> in Pash Tzave, right? In Pash Tzave, when we speak about an Alan Akoyin. It's not, in other words, 
We don't understand that Pasha Sava is actually a, a, um, a changing reform of the original prescription for Aaron. But what we could say is, what we could say is, is that, in other words, in terms of Toma, we could go, we could, we, we could accept the fact that, I, like the Gloss says, that Aaron, in fact, actually was, um, was required, was, was allowed to go into the Mishkan, the metal of the Mishkan, right, from his Toma. But there was one day a year that Aaron's entrance into the Mishkan was not only for Toma for Tyler, but it was kapara for Avain. It was for atonement of sin. And one could say that on that year, on that, in other words, on that day, and only on that day, Aram went to the Kodesh HaKadosh. But as part and parcel of the atonement for sin, there was also a tahara of the Mishkan. In addition to the atonement for sin, there had to also be a cleansing from Toma. And that's what the Chumash is speaking about in Pasha Shmois, that once a year, he would be Mechaper on the Kanois Hamizbeya Chazov. That's what I want to claim. And I think this is something which is missed. Um, it's something that I'm saying with great humility is missing from the Glor and the Chokhmah Zotam. And it's missing from all the modern commentaries afterwards. I think what happened, I think that there's a confusion um, between what's called atonement for sin and what's called purification from impurity. And that, in fact, the Avaidah of Yom Kippur involves actually two things. It involves a, um, a purification from impurity, but also, it also involves an atonement for sin. One could argue that perhaps, as the Glaw says, that perhaps the, um, the, um, the, 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 the cleansing, the purification, maybe from Toma, could have been allowed besides once a year, but the fact is that it's only once a year that Aaron actually went into the Kurdish HaKadosh. And it was only once a year that there was an atonement for sin. And this atonement for sin also involved a purification of the Mishkan from impurity. Now, I'm being a little bit vague over here because I'm going to actually want to develop this. But in any case, what I want to say is, is that the simple tailors of just saying that there was an original procedure for purification, which was later amended, in my opinion, is a mistake. Because the Pasha is speaking about two things. It's speaking about both a purification of impurity, but it's also speaking about an atonement for the sin. The atonement for sin, in my opinion, only took one place one time a year. We don't see, and there's no need for it, we don't see that there was any need to atone for sin, right, to atone for sin more than once a year. And, that, and, 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 I would, and and more than that, I would say that the, 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 there are aspects of the avoided, the, the, the sprinkling of the blood that we see in the Mizbeach Hazov and the Mizbeach HaNechoshim, which is part of the Yom Kippur service, that certainly it's an avoided service that's related to the purification from impurity. But for example, the Shnei Si'ilim, the Shnei Si'ilim, in my opinion, is not just a purification of impurity. It actually involves an atonement for sin. And of course, the avoida of the Shnei Seirah and the dam which is brought, the fly of the Kashkadoshim, is not really related at all. As we'll see in Midashem of the Chum, it's not really related so much to a purification from purity, but it's related for atonement for sin. So, what I think what we have is, is that we have to once again go through the Pasha and see here the interaction of two concepts, this tahara from Toma, and there's also kapara for Avon. And the Mephoshim, especially the later more modern commentaries, and not just commentaries, in my opinion, have completely confused this issue, and completely um, um, in, in certain sense have <coughs> rejected, not only rejected, have just been confused into thinking that the Torah is not dealing with the Talmud for sin, when in fact, actually, there's explicit pesukim that, in fact, indicate otherwise. So, Mitz Hashem, I think for the, um, I think for the next time, we're going to go back, and we're going to um, look at the pesukim and see how, in fact, actually, that the Torah, in fact, put together two avodas, right? 
the top of, with two different purposes. One was um, <coughs> a concept of purification of impurity, tahara, and one was something which was atonement. And in fact, in, because and, and, and if we look at the parsh in this way, we'll be able to see that the different parts of the chumash, in fact, which um, bring different aspects of the avoid of kohen gadol. We'll see in Mitzvah Shem the machlokes tanoyim and taf ayin in Yuma about parts of the musaf which appear in Bamidbar and not in um, and not in um, in, in Achimais, That using this concept of the Interaction between atonement and between um, and between purification will help us understand how the chumash was in fact put together. Yeah, question. You look confused. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you. You seem you seem to be bringing the grot at the beginning as a proof for the later reduction and the developments of the. Yes, yeah. And then we seem to be knocking that down and saying yes, actually that's not good, that's not a good proof. There, well, I'm not I'm not relying the oral tradition of the written law. Right, but, we've, Shalom, we've, no, but in but my opinion, the, the Gora is missing things. But why can't we just say much more easily to support the grot that the posik at the end of Tetzava was also redacted the once a year posik at the same time that the posik in the middle of Achremos was redacted and it supports the proof rather than. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, no, but yeah, but the problem is, is that the problem is that the pasuk the end of Shemayis only speaks about the zbeir chazov. What about going into the kodesh hakadoshim? That's my question. My claim, my claim is, is that if we're speaking about tum and taira, that reaches up to including, but not any more than the zbeir chazov. Yeah, what about the coming ca- into the kodesh hakadoshim? Was why do we have a once a year when that came later? Kilu. Okay, and but the answer could be that also came later. What came later? The once the concept of once a year, which was the kasha. No, but no, no, but no, but the once a year, so like this, the once a year which comes from part tzave, right, cannot possibly refer to the entire void of the kohen gadol, because that only refers to an act of tahara. Mm. Notice what I'm claiming is is that you can't. In other words, one cannot speak about a reform movement or a redaction, whatever you want to call it, right? Lush and noki, lush and lo, lo noki, right? Um, from the Pasuk and Tzitzavah, because Tzitzavah only speaks about a purification of the Mitzvah Chazov. But what about the Kodesh HaKadoshim? But maybe that's only dealing with parts of the later once-a-year service, because it's dealing with the parts no, of the No, 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 but I'm saying like this. If you're saying that the once-a-year is a later thing, and you're basing yourself, right, you're basing yourself either on the, right, you're basing, basing yourself on the Pasha Tzitzavah, you know, it says Aaron HaKoyen, right? That's very good in terms of Toma. But, for example, we're, why would there be a need for a tone? In other words, all the arguments that are being made for Tome Taira, right, are, not, are exclusive from the concept of atonement. In atonement, where do we see, for example, that a person has to bring two, two, the two Si'ilim have to do with atonement for sin? And that has nothing to do with the Pasuk and Shemais. In other words, in other words even if I want to say that Aaron had to be, you know what, Tahara is something which you might say, this is an emergency measure. We have Tahara, we have a concept of Tahara. Anytime the person comes to me, then in fact, actually, he has to be Betahara him. There's procedures for Tahara, I mean, which actually extend from Perak Yud until Perak Tezayid, right? And those are procedures that are administered as soon as the person becomes to me. But the concept of a day of Kapala is not the same thing. We don't see that a, a, a general Kapala for Klai Yisrael Right? Is, is something which is done on. That's not something that we're we pressing the Chumash. That has to be done on the spot at the time when there's a Chay, but rather what? In fact, a Kapar for Klai Yisrael, could, we don't see any precedent that is done any more than once a year. That's what I want to claim. In other words, the concept of being Metar from Toma, right? I can understand this is an emergency procedure because any time a person comes to Toma, you have to be him. I mean, they have to bring Kabbalah to the base of Mikdash. But what need is there to make an emergency procedure for general Kapala of all of Klai Yisrael? That's something which, in my opinion, right, cannot be understood as having been previously an emergency issue. So therefore, since Achei Mois stipulates that in addition to Tahara from Toma, there's also, go, there's also the end of the Kohen Gadol in the Kodesh HaKadosh, and his act of atonement, kapala for sin, I don't have to say that that was an emergency measure. That could have always been originally once a year. Now, having knocked down the grass proof, you're back we're left with the original questions about why does it say only Ara not Kohen Gadol? That I will Mir Shem speak about next week. In other words, what I'm saying is the Gros explanation is an explanation only if I understand that the purpose of Achei Mois is the metara from Tumba. Right. 
But as a kapoa, klolis of all klai Yisrael, the God, there's no logic to the God. It doesn't begin. There's no precedent, there's no reason to think like that. Doesn't it, right? Therefore, Aniha Kotten, right, want to claim that the matter is more complex than it is. And therefore, <coughs> the questions that are being raised in the Gors Parish, namely, why in past Tetzavah do we see that Aaron does it once a year, also is going to fall away. Because the, pa- the Pasuk of Tetzavah is only speaking about Tarek from Tumba, but it's not speaking about a Kapala from Chait. Tetzavah. Right. Uh, whereas the Gras said the opposite bit. So. No, the, well, the Gras said it was a emergency procedure. Gras so yeah, the, the Gras says, I don't come any time. So the Pasuk of the Chait, but that's the question, why Pasuk of Tetzavah says, I don't come once a year. Right. There was no answer for that, except you want to say maybe it was also once a year. You could answer like that, okay? However, I want to say that the fact is, is that th- 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 there are two things going on here. This Tara from Toma is part of emergency procedure, but it's going to be Tara from Toma on the one day of Yom Kippur, where there's a Toma, and that is Badafka once a year. So, so now next week, Robert Trevor has to explain why. <laughs> so next why week. Cohen and not Cohen Gadol, so right, so why the. That's Yom, right. The was at the end, not the beginning. So next week in Mir Tashem, we're actually going go beruach hagor, that we have to send the chumash by Vyosai. <clears throat> However, I'm going to explain next week why, in fact, actually, that not only was the concept of Kapala of once a year an original concept too. And this is going to play out in the different places that even Chazal spoke about, the aspects of Yom Kippur, which appear in Bamidba and not necessarily in Achimais too. All of this in Mir Hashem in the next Shia, from an undisclosed place in Yerushalayim Kodesh, until next week, Kol Tov.